You like compact carbines, right? Everyone likes SBRs. Compact guns make everything more practical. Getting it out of your tank, out of your Hyundai, at the match, around the VTEC barricade. Short barrels are good. More practical, you say? Yeah, more practical. Yeah, yeah. Ha -ha, I like that. Whoa, did you find the best handgun for men? Possibly. Possibly. So, really, this ought to have a stock on it. Or yeah. a pistol brace or something. But, but there's a push sling thing. Huh? <laughs> All right. <laughs> However, yeah. Here's the idea. We got an eight and a half inch barrel, mm -hmm. power of a 308, right? I don't think you have the power of 308 anymore. I mean, you've got this core sampler here that'll deafen half the world with flash and noise. Maybe that's, I'm going to argue that that's probably going to have more impressiveness than the velocity <laughs> of, eight, of, of 308 coming out of that eight and a half inch barrel. You know, I have heard people saying, like, you get this short on a 308, yeah. you effectively have reduced the velocity to the point that you have. 762 by 39. What you do have is a lot of sturm and drong. What you're going to have is oh, flash yeah. and boom. But when you get down to it, even though it's a 150 grain bullet versus a 123 grain bullet, I think your velocity drop on this, we're going to see at least what I've seen online, is that this starts becoming essentially that. Well, I'm sure there's some people out there who have already done this sort of data, but frankly, I'm too lazy to look it up. Do I want to just try it. Do you trust what you find on the internet anyway? Let's do it ourselves. So we've got one of those awesome magneto speed chronographs out here today. If you haven't seen that, it's on the channel. It's kind of the coolest chronograph like ever. It's perfect for a uh, thing like this. Yes, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna test a whole bunch of different guns. We've got a 20 inch 308. Yep. AR-10, actually a BRN-10 from Brownells. We've got a standard 16 inch and a C-308 from Century Arms, essentially a set me. And then we've got that thing, an eight and a half inch. This is a PTR V91. And then we're going to do some chrono out of this as our control. Right. And we're going to see how close are these things, really. All right, let's do it. Let's go do it. All right, so our first control, we've got the Magneto Speed Bayonet, which was made for the set me. Look at those cuts. They clearly designed that for this bayonet. That's pretty cool. Um, and we've got five rounds of Austrian Milserp M80 ball, which is going to be our ammunition for the day. Let's load it up and see what the velocity is of a standard 16-inch barrel. Twenty-six seventy is our average, which is exactly what you'd expect from M80 ball, twenty-six hundred ish. So that's our control. Let's go hook it up to that tiny thingamajig and see what we get. I don't even know how to shoot. I think when I put the mag in, I'll mag hold it. That makes sense. I think. So the first interesting question is going to be, do we actually like destroy the chronograph with the first shot? I hope not, because it's pretty cool. The second interesting question is, do we get a reading on the chronograph or is that muzzle device too close to it? And then the third interesting thing is, what's the velocity? So this thing isn't even good for chronographing. We got our chrono here once again. Ooh, that's a good start. Yeah, this kind of stuff, you know, they always put the best effort into these kind of things. Ugh. Try it again. You have to do the HK slap deal. No. Nope. nope. There's a round in there. I'm just going to... All right. Let's call that good. All right. Oh, God. I'm kind of scared. Are you ready? Yep. Wow. Hold on. Yeah, we got a reading. All right, you ready? Yep. Oh, jeez. Jeez, I can feel that in my teeth. I bet you can, too. It's awful. All right, and our average is 1945. Whoa. 800 feet per second less. Nice. I did not expect it to get that low. Okay, now I want to try that AK. Let's try an AK. Oh. Props to Magneto speed. Oh man, you know, I love this chronograph and I actually kind of was wondering if we were going to blow this thing up and we didn't. So this is, like you said, uh, kind of another, this wasn't intended to be, but another promotional spot for this particular chronograph because it freaking rocks. All right, so now we've got a standard 762 by 39 AKM, standard 123 grain wolf Tula stuff. Doesn't the, matter. The best lacquer coated Kami 762 by 39. I hope it smells like cat piss. Ready? Yep. Good. Okay, so the truth of the matter is by cutting your barrel down to eight inches, 
you have less than an AK. This is 2460 on average. So we got to do the math though of bullet weight to velocity, bullet weight to velocity, but it sure sounds like you're probably below the terminal ballistics of 762 by 39, at least on proverbial paper. Yes, I would think you definitely are. That's interesting. Do we have any more other guns to test? We might have one special feature. Let's give it a try. Let's give it. Holy crap, what's that thing? Well, this is exactly apples for apples, except in 762 by 39. This was at some point in its life an AKM that's been modified by somebody and some idiot welded on the front sight. There's something about AK is a knuckle dragging type gun bubbling that goes on in this country that I don't understand. But what we do have here is an eight and a half inch barrel with the same 762 by 39 ammunition. Let's see if we see the same sort of precipitous velocity loss that we saw with 308. Alrighty. Are we good? Yep. All right, our data on that gives us an average of 2,099 feet per second. This is going faster than the 308 was. It is. Now it is a slightly lighter bullet. It it's is. It's 123 instead of 147. Yeah. But what do we get? Half? the velocity drop in 7.62 by 39 that we do in NATO. 7.62 by 39 seems to be less sensitive to, vol to barrel change length and velocity, but let's go have a conversation about that in the conclusion. So they say two things don't lie, hips and data. What? Yeah, hips don't lie. Okay. Yeah, anyways, yeah, that, that went right by you. What? Yeah, cool, pop culture references, use them on Ian, trivia games. Anyways, we got data here. And by the way, the 20 inch gun, there was a little oopsie with that. We never had the 20 inch. There never was a 20 inch. We didn't mention at the intro. You heard nothing. Didn't happen. But we did have a 16 inch, so we still have yes. control. Yeah. So with the 16 inch gun, Austrian mil serp, 147 grain M80 ball, yep. velocity was 2670 average. Okay. With a foot pounds of 2327. Okay. We're, using, we're, we're converting these into actual, into foot pounds so that we can compare apples to apples because we have different bullet weights for the two calibers. But since you have the bullet weight and the bullet velocity, you can do the simple math to give you the foot-pounds of energy. Foot-pounds don't mean everything, nope. but they are a comparable number. That's what we're doing here is yep. comparable. We can't do all the variables. Okay, so then we went down to the uh, eight and a half inch thing. I don't know what else to call this, but a thing. It's a V51. Same ammunition. Yep. Average velocity for five shots, 1945. And in foot-pounds of energy, that becomes 1,235, so you lose almost 50% of your energy when you lose 50% of your barrel. You dang near lost 700 feet per second. That's insane. Yeah. So then we moved over to the 762 by 39 guns, you know, the intermediate 30 caliber cartridge from the AKM. With the 16-inch barrel, uh, this is a 123-grain bullet that came out at an average velocity of 2460 yep. and 1,653 foot-pounds of energy. Okay. And then we went down to the eight and a half inch AKM. So by the way, yeah. that a, a standard AK is gonna have 25% more muzzle energy than this thing. Yeah, yeah, you're actually, with this words, it's 1235 and the standard AK was 1653. Yep. Okay, now we do realize that there's a difference in bullet mass. Yeah. And that may have something to do with penetration through walls or magic things that happen. Uh, yes and no, you know, when it comes to penetration, mm -hmm. you've got construction, bullet construction, yep, but yep. then velocity matters more than mass. That said, there is a difference there between 147 and 123, and I realize we can't account for that here, but that's just a thing. But regardless, on the data sheet, significantly more velocity and f almost, actually more than 400 foot-pounds of energy from the AK. Yep. Then we went down to the eight and a half inch AK, that, that thing. Um, that, that thing, yeah, that thing. Um, and same ammunition, uh, average velocity of 2099. Yeah. Meaning faster than the same eight and a half inch barrel with 308. Yep. That's interesting, and an average foot pounds of energy of well, excuse me, foot pounds of energy of 1203. So interestingly, the eight and a half inch barrel AK hold lost this, hold this thing. I don't want to touch it anymore. It lost less velocity than the eight and a half inch 308. Yeah. Because the intermediate cartridge is designed to deal with this better. And frankly, I'm gonna postulate, and I think we know this is a fact. The actual 16-inch AK is a longer barrel than is necessary for the full capabilities of the cartridge's velocity. Yeah. They're actually out of powder burn by the time the bullet leaves the barrel. Right. 
So I think we've seen the Russians go to like a 12 and a half inch barrel or That's something. That's kind of one of the standardized new versions and it looks pretty cool. And I don't think they lose any velocity with the same ammunition. Yeah. And I at one time had a 10.5 inch AK and when I did velocity check, I only lost like 150 feet per second or something. It was not a very significant uh, velocity loss. So the upshot is you almost have identical muzzle energy with both of these. Interestingly, we still have, because of the bullet mass difference, this, this has about, well, it actually it has, has 32 foot-pounds more. Which in practice means nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So this and that are comparable in performance. The problem is that thing is converting half of its muzzle energy into seismic energy from that muzzle break. It is, uh, to say that that is disruptive to the shooter, now we do have this incredible thing on here, but to say that's disruptive to not only the shooter, but everything and everyone around it would be an understatement. Yeah. This rattles your teeth, this will cure kidney stones, bladder stones, could cause cancer in California, not sure. But the, I'm sure it does. That thing is insane, and I don't think that that's the whole purpose. I think this and that 308 is wildly overboard with the amount of powder yep. burning outside of the yep. barrel. This is not burning nearly as much powder outside of the barrel because, if we said, if you add another four inches to that, you're probably not burning any more powder out of the barrel. You're getting the entire powder burn. Yep. So, and you know what? You still get a really cool fireball out of this thing, too. Yeah, you do. It's not quite as unpleasant as that. That's not to say that that's not fun. That's not fun. You don't think that's fun? That's not fun. Now, here we're gonna hear a couple other things in the discussion here. So I think we've proven with data, because data don't lie, that this and that have pretty much on paper the same ballistic, terminal ballistic capabilities and penetrative capabilities in the field. Yes, I'm willing to stand by that. Yep. Now, with that said, one of the things we will hear is that in the field there are times where supply chains are different than others. And five five oh I'm going somewhere. Okay. Five five six, as we know, isn't the best uh, barrier penetrator. Okay. okay, we know that. And 762 by 39 by the basis of the bullet construction of bullet mass tends to be a little better at punching through shrubs, walls. So we hear. Wood. Yep, well, we know. That's, there's some there's truth to that without specialized cartridges or specialized projectiles. So if you had a supply line where you only had 308 and could not get 762 by 39, but you knew you wanted to punch through walls, this would not be, this would be bad, but it would still do something that maybe your 556 could not. Yeah, I don't care. I'm just, I would take pretty much anything over that. Yeah. You I see, would definitely where, take this over that. You see where I'm going with that, though, sort of. Now, it, I'm, no one's issuing this. I God, I hope. Um, <laughs> but, but I just want to make that point because I know we're gonna hear it in the comments. And sometimes you have 308, you don't have a 762 by 39, but maybe this is around. And I don't know why. No. And no, this, no, actually, that never happens. All right, all right, fair enough. But it's an interesting result, and I think what we read on the internet actually turned out to be the truth. Once you get to a certain barrel length on 308, you are really just wasting time, money, and expense, and uh, a situational awareness. There is one use for that. Okay. It is to put a registered trigger pack on it yes. and take it to Knob Creek. Oh, yeah. And light and up. Go. Ah! Light up the entire firing line and make everything stop for a moment when people look. Yeah. yeah. Basically, it makes it makes it Syria. It's a look at me gun. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Syria. That's true. Good point. Well, I think that's really interesting, and this kind of data is really fun to acquire. And, guys, if you like this stuff, please consider supporting us. Uh, this kind of stuff, blowing ammunition out of these guns, it came from Patreon supporters. Yep. So this actually was a kind of donation, believe it or not, by a Patreon supporter. So we didn't buy this. This was donated by a supporter. I'm not sure it was kind. <laughs> like, I, I think you may have had an ulterior motive in like, oh, I don't want that thing. Who well, can like, I pawn this thing off I think on? it's kind to the audience because it allowed us to do an actually yes. really interesting video and that we didn't true. have this in our inventory to do it. So I'd like to thank that Patreon supporter for his patronage, not only in keeping the channel alive, but providing this for us to do this with. Yeah. This will show up again. I, I think that I'm going to go ahead and... God, really? I think I'll form one this. Oh, okay. Put a stock on it and uh, see what I can do. Yeah, okay. but that'll take time. Thank goodness. Yeah. But guys, if you are a Patreon supporter, thank you so much. You bought the ammunition that we shot today, and hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you're not, please consider it. And if you can't, we totally understand, but it's only Patreon supporters that keep this channel alive. We're not sponsored or advertiser supported by anyone but you, the viewer. If you can't, got it, please just subscribe to one of the channels. Distribute multiple of them. You can find them all at nrange.tv. Thanks, and share with your friends.